breathe deeply and slowly <coughs> let go of any tension in any part of your body and relax yourself as you relax gently make this thought i am a peaceful soul i am a contented soul i am focused and i am present I am a peaceful soul. I am a contented soul. I am focused and I am present. <coughs> Gently rub your palms and wipe your eyes. going okay having fun yes? yes very good someone asked an interesting question today morning they said balabai one speaker comes and says amrit vele meditation karo the next speaker comes and says amrit vele kuch likho third speaker comes and says pani ko charge karo fourth speaker comes and says khane se pehle kuch der ruk ke drushti dekhe khao kya karna hai kya nahi karna hai itni sari baatein so then i said it's a very good question many of you might be having those questions nothing wrong because i also had the same questions when i came to brahma kumari the first time the underlying theme of all these suggestions if you see is to help incorporate simple rituals or small changes in your daily rituals to make your thoughts more powerful and also more peaceful and relaxed you can pick up any of those rituals whichever you feel comfortable with because they take hardly a few seconds and this is what is usually called as habit stacking what is it called you already have a habit now if you want to inculcate something positive tag it with an existing habit we all eat at least 3 times a day with another 3 or 4 times with kurkure added in between so each time you eat something if you can bring that thought that let this food give me that energy give that drishti so you have added and if you practice recall the neuroplasticity that mohit bhai was talking yesterday repeat it a few times it becomes a habit so whichever actions or whichever small changes that you want to incorporate with your regular rituals make a note and consciously start practicing you can pick up any one of those or few of those all of those whatever is you are comfortable with and if you forget for a day or two what should you do because many a times we start with a lot of enthusiasm and most of the times for all good things our enthusiasm is soda water enthusiasm we don't want that to happen to any one of you you know it is said when you come up the mountain you charge yourself when you when you go down the mountain your stage also goes down correspondingly please don't allow that to happen 
So you can stack those and start doing it. Now, this is what we learned about in the last two and a half days of how to empower yourself or empower ourselves, yes? Now there is a concept in our culture which is called as Shatru Bhod. That means not only should I be aware of my strengths, I should also be aware of my enemies or opponent's strengths. So we learned about how, can, how should I empower myself, how can I make myself relaxed, how can I make myself stable, how can I empower, how can I make myself more peaceful, yes? Now, this session is about the Shatru Bodh. What is it that causes me and makes me anxious? What is it that pulls me away from my relaxed state? That knowledge is also important, yes or no? Because then we can create strategies to overcome those. Okay, that's where we talk about digital wellness today. Very beautifully, it captures the whole essence of what digital wellness or the mobile usage is about. Indriyanam hi charatam. That means indri means the senses. Charatam means they wander. Yen mano anuvidhiyate. Man when the mind follows those distracted senses, okay, they will wander. That's the natural state of most of the, all of our senses. When mind follows those wandering senses, tadasya harati pragnyam, pragnyam means intellect, our ability to make decisions, tadasya, that following of the mind with those wandering senses will remove or reduce your ability to make a decision. Harati means reduce or destroy. How is that? Gives a very beautiful analogy. Vayur nava vibambasi. That means it's like a boat that has lost its sails and it is floating in an open ocean. That is what will happen to your, yourself and your mind if you allow your mind to follow the wandering senses. So the senses wander, and when one lets the mind follow them, it carries the wisdom, pragna, intellect, away like a wind-blown ship on the waters. We all can relate to that? I am hoping none of us is like that, but the chances are less. Can you guess what those three M's are about which we will be discussing or we have started discussing at least about the two M's already and the third M we will discuss now. Very good. Mind. Meditation. Very good. Very good. And there's an interesting relationship between the three by the way. Mobile destabilizes your mind. Meditation stabilizes your mind. Very simple. Now you choose which one you want to have. Because all the three are inextricably related. We have uh, Harsh and Subha. Oh yes, very good. We all learnt about what we should have and what we should not have. And I'm sure almost all of you must also be counting calories, especially Brahma Kumaris are so sweet that in every meal they also give you sweet. And many of you must have said, Subhai khaya hai abhi, abhi nahi. Okay? Because we start counting our calories. Now my question to you is, have you ever thought about this? And do you know these digital calories have already made us digitally overweight and for many of us digitally obese already? And do you know what's happening to your brain and body due to these digital calories? There's a lot of ignorance out there, a lot of it. Just a few months ago, my personal physician approached me and he said, Bala, I'm frustrated with this mobile addiction, please help me. He's my personal physician. I'm not lying. I shared this example because 
the digital addiction is so insidious that we don't seem to understand what we are doing to ourselves. And that is what we will explore today in the next few minutes. So what is its impact on brain and thinking? Just feel the surface on which you are seated. Just feel it. You're able to feel it? Don't even touch it, just feel it. You're able to feel it? Yes? So you are sitting there for the last 15, 20 minutes, but as soon as I asked you to feel that touch, you experienced it. It became your experience. You are able to feel how hard or soft the surface is, how cold or warm the surface is. Yes or no? That's exactly how our brain works. Whatever sensory information gets processed by the brain, that is what becomes my experience. And which sensory experience uh, input does brain process? That which I pay attention to. Because brain is a fantastic filter and attention is its gate. Whatever I pay attention to, that is what gets processed by the brain and that is what becomes my experience. So each one of us is a product of our attention. Wherever my attention goes, energy flows. Yes or no? And wherever energy flows, life grows. Positive or negative? It can be both. So who or what is impacting our attention? And as I was mentioning the other day, one of the worst things that has been done in the post-independence education, we have many educators also in the audience, is to completely remove education about mind and about attention. Simple question, how many of you have studied how to improve attention and improve your focus as a part of your school, college, office, university study? A separate subject that helps you to improve attention and focus. We are about 400 in the hall, not one hand went up. Not one, you can just look around. Not one hand. That's the sad state of affairs. And this is something we kept hearing since childhood, which we tell our kids, attention pay kar, focus kar, nahi to bikhari banega. <laughs> but how do you pay attention? Nobody teaches us what is attention. Nobody tells us. And that is what is getting impacted big time. When you are focused on a particular task, say you are preparing a report or preparing a proposal or a slide deck, and you receive a phone call, you attend the phone call and you come back, will you be able to get back your focus immediately or it's going to take some time? All of us? That's a feature, not a bug. The reason is, now this is important, every time I switch my attention, a portion of my brain's energy is used to perform that attentional switch. And that's what we call as brain switching penalty. That's how brain works. Every time I switch my attention, a portion of my mental energy is used up. That's why on some days, if you got disturbed so many times, you get exhausted at the end of the day, and when you look back, nothing got done. Have you experienced that? This is where the energy getting, is getting used up. And ask yourself, in a live long day, how much of your energy is being spent in repaying? It is penalty. If we choose, we don't have to pay it, but we are paying it because we are ignorant of it. How much of your energy is getting used up for paying brain switching penalty? Now, why is this problematic? Very simple, let me give you another example. You want to cook some rice. You put the rice in the cooker, switch on the gas stove. Every time you receive a notification, switch off the gas stove. Attend to the notification, come back and switch on the gas stove. Will it take longer or shorter for the cooking to get completed? Longer or shorter? And sometimes food also gets spoiled. Because for some foods, or for most foods, the flame should be continuous. Yes or no? 
you can write down. Attention is that flame that is helping us accomplish things in our life. Attention is like that flame. All of you have your notebooks? Or does anyone need a paper and a pen? Because we are going to play a game. And yes, there are still some games that you can't play on your mobile. <laughs> One of those you will see. So attention is that flame that helps us accomplish things in our life. Every time you distract yourself, you are switching off that flame. And that is what is impacting our efficiency, effectiveness, and thus productivity. And we are not aware, we are not even aware of it. How many of you multitask? Yeah, you can raise your hands. Lamba hat khada karo, as Baba says. Okay, now you are ready, let's play a game. And I want you to multitask. And I'll show you what, how to do it. Open a fresh page. Open a fresh page. Draw two lines such that your page is divided into three parts. Just two lines. Easy? You need a paper and a pen? Yes, if you have a notebook and your friend doesn't have, please help them by giving a sheet of paper and a pen. Brother? All of you have your paper and pen? I want all of you to play, please, even if it takes a couple of minutes. You want some? Pens. Do we have? Yeah, one of them you can give this pen, do it. Yeah. You need a paper? One second. Take this. You need a paper? Take this. Paper. Okay. He's giving. Now, we are talking about attention, so please pay attention. I'm going to give you instructions. Now, the first instruction, don't start until I ask you to start, because I'm going to time this exercise. What's the instruction? Now listen, you have this first line, all of you. Now what you need to do is, you should write multitasking is a lie on top of the line. Don't start. I haven't asked you to start, attention please. And below the line, you should write one, two, three, four. Okay, now the twist is, that's what you're going to write, but the twist is, you will write a letter on top of the line, number below the line. Don't start. I haven't asked you to start. Attention, please. Letter on top of the line, number below the line. Letter, number, letter, number. This is how you're going to do. Instructions clear? Instructions clear? Letter on top of the line, number below the line. Shout out once you're done. Wait. Sorry? You, you, you finished the sentence. No, no. I said, draw two lines, okay? Which will divide it into three parts. Now the first line. You have the first line? On top of the first line, start writing the English letters. I'll tell you when to start. 
and below the first line start writing numbers. The second line, we'll leave it for now. Instructions clear? And you know how to write? Letter on top of the line, number below the line. Just wait. Shout out once you're done. Start. No cheating. Letter on top of the line, number below the line. Letter, number, letter, number. Complete that whole sentence. Letter on top of the line, number below the line. Quick, quick. Okay? Good? Good, pretty fast. Excellent. Letter on top of the line, number below the line. Letter, number, letter, number, letter, number. Is that how you did? All of you, that's how you're doing? Very good. Let me know if everyone is done. Anyone still doing? Done? Fantastic. So now you have the second line. You have the second line? Now, what you need to do, don't start. You should write the whole English sentence on top of the line at once. Multitasking is a lie. And then write the numbers. Okay, not letter number. Don't start. Instructions clear. It's very simple. Write the whole English sentence on top of the line and then write all the numbers below the line. Instruction clear? Any questions? Wait, wait. The same sentence. Yes, exactly the same sentence. No change. Start. The complete sentence on top of the line and then number below the line. Brilliant. Done? Question number one. This is what you got in both the cases? Very good. Next question. Which one was easier, first one or second one? Which one took longer, first one or second one? Just so that you know, the first person who said yes took 28 seconds. And the first person who said yes for the second one took 13 seconds. Okay? Now, in which one did at least one of you make at least one mistake? First one or second one? Okay, now the interesting part. You created exactly the same output. You took double the time. You felt stressed and you made a mistake. I didn't ask you to write 19, 19 table recalling from memory. You wouldn't even start writing. I said one to 19 and I showed you what to write and still we ended up making mistakes and you have the audacity to say you can multitask. <laughs> the most important point is human brain cannot multitask. It's a misnomer. What you are trying, what you are doing when you are multitasking is you are switch tasking. You are switching. How many times did you have to switch your attention here? In the first one. Attention. Attention. 36. Now, letter to number and then number to letter. So that's 18 into 2, 36. How many times did you have to switch your attention here? Once. That means by multitasking, you switched your attention 35 times extra. That doubled the time, introduced mistakes, and made you stressful. That is the power of brain switching penalty. What you're doing is switch tasking. Again, I'm saying human brain cannot multitask. Because two cognitively important tasks, human brain cannot think at the same time. That's a feature, not a bug. Yes, brother.
Okay, so this is switch tasking, this is not multitasking. And there's something else called background tasking. When you're driving the car, when you play the music, is it multitasking? No, that is background tasking. When will it become multitasking? Ye kaun sa raag baj raha hai? Ye kaun sa instrument baj raha hai? When you're driving, then that will become, you're trying to do switch tasking. And then you will end up, I don't have to say that. <laughs> Many a times, if you are used to having some kind of music in the background when you are studying, if you have observed, after a few minutes, the album is finished and only a few minutes later you will recognize, Are ye pura ho gaya. Because you are not paying attention. You are not switching your attention, you are only focused on one thing. So human brain cannot multitask. Say that after me. Next. As a leader, I will not ask my team members to multitask. <laughs> yes, somebody raised their hand. L let them do this exercise. That's the simplest way. You can't. I'll have a conversation <laughs> after the session. And According to Harold Peschler, who is a very pioneering researcher in the field of memory, when you try to do two cognitive tasks at the same time, the brain's capacity of a Harvard MBA reduces to that of an eighth standard kid or an eight-year-old kid. We just, we just saw that in practice. So if you want to become successful, switch to monotasking. This is where relaxation and reflection helps. Take those few minutes, sit back, do some deep breathing, relax, take a notebook, not your mobile. In the beginning of the day, make a note. How do I want to prioritize my energy? Time will automatically be taken care of. And in the afternoon sometime, review it. And in the evening, once again review what changes need to be made for the next day, very simple. And then you will see, suddenly your productivity, efficiency and effectiveness shoot up with just with one small change. And one more insight, our working memory is very short. You can't juggle too many options inside your brain. That's why you need to put them down on your paper and then come back and check, becomes easier. And next, as leaders and as organizations, we are extremely good at measuring this to the last second. Punch in and punch out. But we do not have absolutely no clue about this next part. I spend eight hours in front of my laptop with 25% focus. How many hours worth of work gets done? Eight hours, 25% focus. You're all experienced? This is the equation we need to remember. If you want to increase your effectiveness, efficiency, forget about the time. Start thinking about your focus, attention. That's what we need to improve. Yesterday we learned about the positive aspects of neuroplasticity. Today we'll talk about the other side of neuroplasticity. Because it comes from the word plasticos, from the Greek word. That means that which is flexible, that which can be molded. Neuroplasticity means brain's ability to change in response to changes in the environment. Brain changes its physical structure in response to our actions. You saw that yesterday. This is a slice of the brain before you learn something. After you learn, this is what happens to the same slice of the brain. What's the difference you're observing? There are more neurons, there are more new, new connections. Every time I learn something new, whatever I'm learning, it's getting translated into a bunch of neural circuits. The more I repeat, the stronger the neural circuits. The stronger the neural circuits, the easier the task becomes. The stronger the neural circuits, the longer I will remember. That's the neuroscience behind learning, very simple. And now, the same neuroplasticity is value neutral. Okay? Ask your brain to worry. 
it becomes better, better at worrying. Ask your brain to concentrate, it becomes better at concentrating, thanks to neuroplasticity, because brain is value neutral. And that's why I call brain as a wonderful tatastu machine. <laughs> I can never wake up at 4.15, forget it. Your brain says tatastu. <laughs> that is what will happen. You will say from today onwards, I will sleep early and I will wake up early and I will give my best. Your brain says tatastu. So whatever you keep repeating to yourself, that is what your brain helps you to realize through this property of neuroplasticity. Who has the key? I have the key. And what is the other side of neuroplasticity? The changes in physical structure of the brain and brain chemistry, that is what leads to addictions. Because the neural circuits have become so strong that you lost control over your own actions. And the more you use mobile and social media, that's why the harder it gets to move away from them. When you were a kid, you did not have mobiles, you did not have social media, and it was so easy to play something else. Now why is it become difficult to stay away from those? See the reason now. And most of us don't understand this very, very important insight if something is a tool, it's just waiting there to be used, like your bicycle, like your football. If you haven't used your football for a month because of your exams, does your football say, Bala, ek maina ho gaya, aake kick karna? <laughs> Will your football say that? It's just lying there. Will your car tell you, can you come and drive? I'm getting bored sitting in the garage. Does it tell you? Because it's a tool, it's waiting to be used. But if something is not a tool, it's, it's it demanding things from you. It's seducing you. It's manipulating you. It wants things from you. That's what that little piece of glass and metal is doing, which has become an extended part of our body. And that, so we moved from tools-based technology to addiction-based technology environment. Let us please understand this. This addiction is woven into the technology. Let that sink in. And that is why we started off this session saying, what's the second principle we learned? I'm unique and then I'm the master. Please don't forget. That's why we started there. I am the master. What did that lead to? This is the reason. And we are not even aware. That's the sad part. Because there's absolute ignorance about all these aspects. Because we are neither taught about mind, nor are we taught about brain. Two most important organs that we are asked to use all through our life. But we don't know a thing about how these two work. Yes or no? Now I'm going to show you a short clip of South Korean teenagers who wear diapers while playing multiplayer games so that they don't lose points by going to the bathroom. Yes, this is reality. I'm not joking. And I'm going, you will also meet two American teenagers who were spending 15 to 16 hours a day online and their parents had to check them in into an internet de-addiction center. And we have many such centers in India because internet addiction is a recognized psychiatric disorder. Watch. It is not uncommon that in South Korea teenage video gamers put on diapers. This way they avoid losing points by going to the bathroom. Tom, you do not need any further introduction. This was great. My lowest point came at the beginning of this year 
New Year's Eve, I had lost a job. I was losing my girlfriend. I, my family, my relations were very strained. And I tried to drink myself to death. Suicide. I was playing video games 16 hours a day, often drunk. I watched porn a lot. And I just had given up. I had no future. I had no will to live. I was just waiting for the timer to run out. I was in my spring quarter in college, and I was doing nothing except sleeping about six hours a day and playing video games and absolutely not attending any of my classes, not doing any of my work, and lying to my parents about my progress. So it was a lot of lying, manipulation, isolation especially, which are all common things for addicts, but mine were pretty much sleep and, you know, interact with my addiction. As kids, if you recall your experience, you picked up many things much faster. And as you age, if you want to pick up something, it takes a little longer. Nothing wrong with it. Because when we are young, neuroplasticity is very, very strong. As we age, the power of neuroplasticity reduces. It's not absent. And that's why you can teach new tricks to dash, dash. You can fill it. Because neuroplasticity is active until your last breath. If you have a brain, you have neuroplasticity. And trust me, we all have one. Sometimes we forget, but we have one. So I'm going to show you another clip of an Indonesian laborer who taught smoking, just for the heck of it, to his 18-month-old son. And in less than two months, he started smoking 40 cigarettes a day. And I'm sorry if it is disturbing. I'm just going to show you for a few seconds and then remove the video. Just to show you the power of neuroplasticity. A tourist attraction in his native Indonesia for all the wrong reasons. This toddler on the island of Sumatra, famous for his nicotine addiction. <laughs> Aldi Rizal started smoking when he was just 18 months old. Now he's hooked and on 40 a day. And don't think of denying him his fix. The toddler goes crazy, screaming, slamming his head on the floor, even getting sick if he doesn't get his two pounds. And that's why when I see parents, unsuspecting, ignorant parents, they do na yaar, CEO ka call hai. Ye ghanta to kam se kam attend karne de, de de usko. Young brains, we are making them addicted to these devices because we are not able to give time to them. And I'm sorry if I'm going to use some strong language because I'm passionate about this area. If you don't have time with your kids, which is the most important thing you are supposed to give to your kids, then we have no right to spoil the future of an unsuspecting soul who never wanted mobile in the first place. We gave them. And this is what we are doing. PUBG addiction, 19 year old. He was playing, this is before PUBG got banned. You see that? It's 2019, the clip. Six hours a day, 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., playing PUBG sleeping for three hours, going to college as if nothing happened. In two and a half months, he developed blood clots inside the brain. And you know, if you get a blood clot, that is, leads to stroke and paralysis. Waist down, he got paralyzed. Doctors tried their best in a few months, he died. And I didn't make this up. I just took the screenshot from the news and from the newspapers. Like drugs, today we have mobile withdrawal symptoms. How many of you seen in your family or in your friend's family where um, you don't have to click any of these pictures. I will share all the material that's already uploaded. So just please pay attention and make notes. You don't have to click any pictures, please. How many of you have observed kids who don't want to eat without giving a mobile or an iPad. See that? 
And these are mobile withdrawal symptoms. Now watch a seven-year-old kid. His dad refuses to give the mobile and see his reaction, how violent he turns. Right. You can't have your cell phone tonight. You can't have your cell phone tonight. You can't have your cell phone. You can't have your cell phone. Stop acting like that. Calm down. No cell phone. Calm down. You want it taken away for two days? Do you want it gone for two days? No. Then stop. I want it. Calm down. No cell phone tonight. Calm down. See how you're acting because you can't have no cell phone? You should be playing with your toys instead of doing other things. Stop it. I know you want it, but you can't have it because you were bad tonight. Are you going to stop? Are you going to stop? Are you going to stop? Then stop. No, you can have it tomorrow. If you're good, you can have it tomorrow. Stop. Stop. The same withdrawal symptoms all of us suffer. I won't ask you, but check yourself. Aadhe ghante ke liye koi notification nahi aaya, koi churpur nahi hua, sab kuch thik to hai, internet on to hai, mobile switched on to hai. Let that register. I'll pause, read it a couple of times, and let that register. Mobile impacts the same areas of the brain that are impacted by drugs, hard drugs. If you are not able to move away from your mobile voluntarily for whatever period of time you want, in one way or the other, you are addicted. Hurts our ego, but that's the truth. Yaar, ye boss ne dhima kha liya do ghanta. Thoda relax hote hain. Chalo, WhatsApp check karte hain. Facebook dekhte hain. That's what we do, right? That's relaxation. Do minute ke liye shuru karte hain. Do ghanta guzar jata hain. And after two hours of that scrolling, do you feel, yaar, maza a gaya, yaar. Do ghanta Facebook dekh liya. Ab dekho, char ghanta non-stop kaam karunga. Do you feel that way? Or do you feel exhausted and empty and directionless? You know the reason? Because we have completely misunderstood the difference between relaxation and stimulation. Relaxation means think less, think slow. Stimulation means think different. That is why the first few minutes you feel relaxed, just for the first few minutes, because you're thinking different. But as you continue, you will start getting exhausted. So do not stimulate your brain thinking that you are relaxing. And now you say, Bala, ye sab complicated cheeze batate hain, simple karo na. How do I know I am relaxing or I am stimulating my brain? Very simple. Make a note, reflect and grill it inside you. Wherever there is a screen, irrespective of the size of the screen, it is, please read that louder, because that's when it will get registered. All of you. Yes, very clear. Even if you watch continuously two hours of relaxation videos on YouTube, still you will get exhausted. Because that's how brain works. So if you want to relax, take up a non-screen activity, please. Move closer to the nature. Play with the kids. Speak with your loved ones. Pick up your hobby, engage your body, all the senses. That is when you will start relaxing. You know the reason all of you have felt relaxed as soon as you walked into the campus? Do you know the reason? Not only the vibrations. This body which is made up of five elements, when it is allowed to be in harmony with the five elements outside, the result is health. When I pack this instrument of five elements, 
away from those five elements in artificial light, artificial air, and with artificial things and not real people, there is dis-ease followed by disease. That's why we feel exhausted. That's why we are not able to sleep properly. That's why we are not able to focus, because we are constantly stimulating our brain. If I continuously keep revving up the engine of my car without switching it off, what happens? What happens? Or if I continuously use the mixie in the kitchen, what happens? Before that, smoke starts coming out, and then sparks come, and then it stops functioning. That's what happens to us also, because we are constantly stimulating the brain. Now, why is this important? Why are we learning about this? There's a glass, yes? Now, if I keep shaking this, will I be able to hold any water? I asked for another glass because that glass is full and I didn't want to spill the water. If I keep doing this, even if this glass is made up of gold or platinum, if I keep shaking this, will it be of any use? No use, right? For me to use this glass, it needs to be stable. If the liquid inside the glass is knowledge, if this glass is the brain, this hand is my mind. Every time I get distracted, I'm reducing the capacity of my brain. You see that? So if I want to utilize the power of my brain, I must learn to stabilize my mind. So many of you have asked, what is a crisp, simple definition of meditation? That's the definition of meditation. Stabilize your mind to utilize your brain. Is there anyone in this hall who does not want to utilize their brain? All of us want to. Then the prerequisite is learn to stabilize your mind. Because there are whatever mind thinks and rests upon, that is the shape brain takes. And that is what impacts the body which we discussed even on the first day. That's why we focus so much about this aspect, about our thinking. Very big cost of distraction. Our ability to make decisions gets impaired, increases irritation and anxiety. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. One doctor was challenging. Take away mobiles and television from your kids, then I promise that 70% of the ADHD symptoms in kids vanished without any other medication, just by removing mobiles and television, just by removing the screens. Increases chances of getting depressed, stress hormones inside the body. It reduces the lifespan, practically. And I can share all the published material. I'm not just speaking in thin air. I'll back it up with all the published material, whoever is interested in. And when we start using gadgets, when we transfer our ability to do certain things to the machines, to the instruments, what happens? We are not able to understand. Internet, when it becomes a substitute for personal memory, that is misguided and dangerous. If we constrict our capacity for reasoning and recall, we sacrifice our ability to turn information into knowledge. That's why you just copy and paste. You are skimming, you're browsing. You're not reading, reflecting, imbibing, understanding, and then summarizing. No, you're just copy and pasting. Won't work. And that's why many of you leaders old enough, you must got frustrated after you picked up these Gen Z and these 20 somethings and 25 somethings, when you ask them to solve or implement an algorithm, they, keep, they go for searching and they don't find it because ChatGPT doesn't know the context of your company and they are left blank and you are left scratching your head. This, this is the reason. And the constant distractedness the net encourages is very different from the kind of temporary, purposeful diversion of mind that refreshes our thinking. 
that diversion, that downtime for brain is important, but that should not be replaced with constant distractedness because that is what is making us weak. And many of you, some of you have asked, what about e-book reading? What about digital reading? Now my kids don't read from textbooks. Let's explore that, what the research and experience says. What device you are using for your learning is governed by the attitude that you take to that device. Clear? Let's play a short game. Okay? I'm going to say a word, and whatever word comes to your mind, which is related to that, you're going to say that without thinking. Okay? Demo. Library. Got it now? Shall we play the game? Okay. Food. Water. Drink. Thirst. Okay. Ram Kumaris. Book. Pen. Knife. Mobile. Be honest. Don't think, I said, without thinking, you should say what comes to your mind as soon as I say mobile. Because that is how we have wired. And that's the kind of mindset we take without our knowledge. Not one person would have said mobile means padai. Impossible, eh? And when you take that kind of mindset to your mobile and you want to read, it will not happen because there is a mental block already created. So when you pick up your mobile or digital devices, you go for entertainment, and there you have the propensity to multitask, diminished concentration, and reduced use of annotation. None of my textbooks, I will show you all the textbooks, none of them are clean. I don't like keeping them clean because I scribble. And that's what is needed. When you read, you try to write down what your insights are, what your questions are. And that's what we call as annotation, a very important habit when you are learning something. Less frequent reviewing of what has been read, heard, or viewed. More mind wandering when listening to audio than when reading from a book. Because this is the kind of mindset we carry to digital reading. And when these are the things, do you expect something solid to come out of when you use a digital gadget to read something? That which is where you need to focus, where you need to learn? I'll give you an example. One of my friends, she is a professor at one of these medical colleges in Udaipur. They had about 150 MBBS students appear for their MD exam, postgraduate exam. How many do you think have passed? Take a guess, out of 150. 50, okay, big number. Somebody said one, you are right. You might have wished that you are not right, but you are right. Only one person. And the reason is, she was the only one who read from hard books, not from e-copies. Because there is that constant distraction when you, take, when you use a screen to study. So as parents, if your kids' schools mandate any of these iPads and all this stupid stuff, you as parents make sure that you buy them hard copies of books and make them read from the books. And explain to them why you are doing that. And if you want to read more, that's the book, How We Read Now, by Naomi S. Parin. She wrote this book a couple of years ago. This is increasing, so we need to use digital stuff, yes, but you need to decide, identify your reason for reading. Extremely important. What's your goal? You want to skim the stuff or you want to seriously learn? You pick up the corresponding medium. Take stock of your reading environment, reduce on-screen distractions, know when it is best to block all sorts of online connectivity. Keep your mobile away and learn to accommodate when you can't choose the reading medium. You know, one of my team members, he came to me and he said, uh, Bala, I'm experienced more than 10 years, but I'm not able to meet my timelines. Then, while listening to what he was doing in a typical day, 
I just asked him this question, because it was an online session. How many tabs are open on your browser? I just asked this question. He said 56 tabs. I don't know how many tabs are open on your respective browsers. Then I said, open one or two tabs which are related to the task you are doing, switch off all notifications, and within a week, he was able to meet all his timelines. Just this small change. So the summary, hyperactivity, inattention, depression, multitasking, now there is a clear relationship between new technology exposure and mental disorders. It is no longer correlational, it is causal. The sooner we recognize, the better. Because the world and the advertisers are hell-bent on convincing you that you need to lead someone else's life. That's the sad part. The more you, time you spend on Facebook, the more are the chances of getting depressed. One of their VPs, who's from Sri Lanka, you search on YouTube, you'll get his name. He admissioned this study, or when he, this study came out, he quit Facebook, understanding what impact Facebook was causing. And this study was commissioned by Facebook to show that people don't get depressed by spending time on Facebook, but it came out the other way. Decreased attention span, blue tick anxiety. How many of you know this? I'm at 15 seconds. I don't know if I'm going to change in blue. I'm going to change in blue. Why don't I change in blue? 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 I mean, that is blue tick anxiety. If you use any other applications, it becomes black tick anxiety. I guess you can change the color also nowadays. And increased social media usage linked with lower self-esteem, higher rates of depression and suicides. And these are taken from Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Just see the spike after the social media got introduced on mobiles. And this is reality. This is suicide rates. This is hospital admissions for non-fatal self-harm. 189% increase. Because this is constant comparison. And that is why as parents spending time with the kids and telling them that you are unique, you are good, is so important. Yes, ma'am. So from the age of 13, Facebook, Instagram, everything is allowed for kids. So yes. how do you control that and how do you make them resilient? You don't control, you make them aware. And whatever you want your kids to do, you create those rituals at home. I know many parents. When you're eating, once you come home, you're not allowed to touch your mobile. You will have your study time. That's all you're going to use. Family time of those two hours, nobody touches the mobile. Nobody. Because this is our time. And there are specific zones in the home. Like in puja room, you don't go without taking a bath. Yes or no? Like that, there is one particular space. I know many people who have implemented it. If you want to check your mobile, only that corner is allowed. Rest of the place in the home, you're not going to spoil the vibrations. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes awareness. And I've never said in the last one hour it is easy. But it's possible. I just wanted to share something that related to the same stuff. But uh, when we use Instagram, Facebook, all types of social media, even WhatsApp, we're never paying to use it, right? It's completely free of cost to us. Yeah. So the question we can ask then is, what's the product yeah. that we're using? So what's the product that's actually being used and that is your attention? Your attention is the product that they are using actually. That is why companies don't want you to spend time with your grandkids, but they want you to scroll the photos of your grandkids so that they can sell advertisement and make money. And this is having practical impact on human connections. On average, kids spend seven hours daily, less play, less human interactions. And this is 
damaging emotional health practically because as human beings, we need a smiling face. We want to interact with human beings. That virtual isolation is leading to loads and loads of mental health issues. Death rates three times higher among socially isolated people. And in-person contact stimulates dopamine, which enhances attention and pleasure and serotonin, which reduces fear and worry. That's why if you continuously spend time in front of your screen, you must have seen in your kids that anxiety levels increase because there is no human interaction. So how as parents, as teachers, as leaders, you are going to increase these human connections is a point for you to reflect. Yes, that's the new name. Every day you are using social media for non-essential activities. Kis kutte ki dum kitni teddy hai? Kaun sa actor kis actress ke saath date kar raha hai? Kaun sa actor kaun sa dress pehna hai? Then this is what you are consuming. Choice is yours, always, because you are the master. And when I sat and reflected, why is there so much of addiction? Two reasons. One is accessibility and affordability increase addiction. You might want to make a note and reflect. Very important principle. Accessibility and affordability, both of them increase addiction. And the second reason is, as human beings, we look for reinforcement. We look for acknowledgement. We look for someone else saying, you are good. That is why that irrational love behind likes and comments and followers. Because your ego is getting stroked. Because you are getting validated. That validation, that need for validation is so deep inside that we go to such great lengths Sometimes which are very, very destructive to get validated. Tere photo ko kitne likes mile? Mere to dasmi mi nahi aaye. Ek week se wait kar rahi hoon. Ek bhi follower nahi bada. One week ho gaya. Because the need for that validation. Why? Because we are not taught how beautiful you are. And you are not taught there is someone who is going to love you unconditionally. And that someone is what I met after coming to Brahma Kumaris as a part of Raj Yoga, whom you met in yesterday's session. And when I was reading about near-death experiences, one sentence stood out and it's, it stuck in my head. That is this. Because this is what they experienced. And you are like I am is one of the shortest sentences in English. I love you because you are. You don't have to do anything. You are there, so I love you. That's what he says. You don't need to do anything. You are there, so I'm loving you, period. That's the kind of validation that we need to experience. And he is ready to do that. This is what we learn in Brahma Kumaris. You know, every day in the Murli, what Baba says is, Tum jo ho, jaise ho, mere ho. Isn't beautiful? No conditions, no questions asked. Tum jo ho, jaise ho, mere ho. And I always keep thinking, even if the whole world dislikes Bala, there's at least one who always loves Bala for who he is. All of us have access to him, right? It's just that we need to make time. Shall we experience that for a couple of minutes now? Yes. yes. Sit straight. You can visualize your own Ishtadev or Ishtadevta, whomever you consider as God in the human form. Just emerge the God. Hum form of a lady, form of a, the grandfather, which is my favorite, which I emerged Brahma Baba with Shiva Baba inside him. Go in the front and experience that beautiful drishti, that unconditional acceptance, and hug, and come back. Just sit back, relax.
visualize your ishta dev or ishta dev tha now he or she is in front of you giving you beautiful drishti saying with lots of love say your name to yourself like if i am there i would say bala i love you say your name and then listen to that beautiful voice bachche tum jo ho jaise ho mere ho child whoever you are however you are I accept you completely unconditionally because you are my child. And so saying, your Ishta Dev or Ishta Devta hugs you. Experience the warmth of that hug, that unconditional love and acceptance. And remember, he is always there. even if the whole world rejects you he is the one who is always waiting to take you in his arms and love you for who you are not for what you did or did not do but for who you are Grab your hands and wipe your eyes. Was it difficult? Was it difficult? Easy? Can we do that from now on every single day at least two or three times? Yes? Because when I start experiencing that validation, i will not not look for someone outside and that's why dadi janki she says this so beautifully she says every day see yourself the way baba would see you at least for 5 minutes so empowering so reassuring that yes i am beautiful i am a work in progress but that does not mean i am wrong or i am bad i am good i am working towards it and that reinforcement is what gives me that power when i don't get that validation on a daily basis i look for validation outside this is one reason one most important reason why we get addicted to social media why teenagers get addicted to social media because nobody has taught them this and the second reason we are not taught how to engage our mind positively if i can learn how to engage my mind positively through hobbies through reading through conversations painting anything if i can engage my mind positively then i will not get attracted to social media and the third if accessibility and affordability increase addiction then try to make them inaccessible for those two hours like if you are addicted to tv put the remote on top of the attic which you cannot pull out without having a ladder store your mobile away give it to your mom and say ban karo isko agle ek ghante ke liye it's family time there are many such things many parents and many families are doing because you make them inaccessible and you make them unaffordable and it's impacting your body too every single organ of your body is getting impacted and that's impacting your sleep also how many of you feel you started sleeping late into the night after you started using mobiles right all of us you know the reason as it starts getting dark outside because the body follows sun the circadian rhythm as we call the blue light which gets emanated which is a part of the sunlight outside during the daytime does not allow you to sleep okay because as it starts getting dark the blue component reduces 
and that is a signal for the brain to start releasing a sleep hormone called melatonin. But as you continue to stare at the screen, the blue frequency from the screen light, it tricks your brain and says, Abhi raat hui nahi hai, aish karo. And as a result, the brain keeps postponing the secretion of melatonin and then you start falling asleep later and later. And when that happens, there is a lot of cost to the both physical and mental health. Just go through the list. This is just a representative sample. You need at least six to seven hours of deep sleep every night. Deep sleep. Because it is in that NREM state, non-rapid eye movement, NREM state, that body actually rejuvenates. When you are not able to experience that NREM state enough, you don't feel energetic. When you get up, you feel groggy, you feel frustrated. Yes or no? Most of the days. If that is happening, then you can check. You must be using a lot of screens before sleeping. This is the sad part. That's why we are not able to notice. We are destroying ourselves internally, and that is happening slowly, dheere se, pyaar se ho raha hai. And only when it reaches a certain threshold, we are able to understand. But it is destroying. Whenever you, whenever you stand in the queue, whenever you feel a little bored, what do you do? Chuck. Your dopamine rush, and then lagato. Right? Anything that is in excess is bad. Ati sarvatra varjayet. I'm not saying you should not use your mobiles. That was never my intention. But anything in excess is bad. And that's what even Bhagavad Gita says. Ati rupena vai sita. She was so beautiful that she fell into all those problems. Ati garvena ravanaha. Ravan was so arrogant which brought him all those troubles. Ati danam balir dattva. The king Bali, because of his ati dan, he ended up losing all his kingdom and ended up having all those problems. That is why ati sarvatra varjayet, a simple principle in life, everywhere in life, whether it is good or bad, anything in excess is not good. And so is our digital gadget usage. Few simple things. Do not keep your mobile on the dining table. Very, very bad habit. Because I was speaking to my gastroenterologist friend a few years ago when the mobile usage started picking up, he said, many of these youngsters come, came to him with stomach problems. They still come. And he couldn't understand. Everything was okay, but why are they still having these stomach reactions? And then he realized they were touching their mobiles with the same hand and consuming the food with the same hand. And because the mobile was never disinfected and it was being placed in all over the place, including the toilet, that is what was causing infections. So never put your mobile on the dining table. Very bad habit. Disinfect your mobile regularly. Do not carry your mobile into the bathroom. There's a reason. I'm sure if that it must have also been covered by the Satvik Movement's videos. You need focus in both times. When you're trying to take in something, when you're trying to remove something from the body, both those actions need focus. So don't get distracted. That is why so many problems of indigestion. Because we are not even eliminating the waste from our body properly. We are not even allowing the body to eliminate. Mobile should be kept at least 10 feet away from you while you are sleeping. Never ever keep the mobile beside your head. Extremely dangerous. We have Vinay here? Yes, Vinod. Share your experience. You can stand up. You can come here. Take the mic. So is Vinod from Presidio. It's a software company in Chennai. So he'll share his experience very briefly. Thank you, everyone. And thanks, Bala, for this opportunity. Um, as Bala said, this is one of the worst activity or one of the things that I've been doing it out almost close to 10 plus years, I've been keeping my mobile phone next to my head. And I was not getting proper sleep at all. And uh, Bala and, uh, took a session 
in one of our internal programs in which he taught me the same thing and this has brought me a light where I was not getting deep sleep or not getting enough sleep at all because I didn't get addicted to it. I just check my emails, respond to the customers or even to my counterparts. It's not one year, two years. It's been more than 10 years. And after this session, what I did is I kept my mobile phone in the living room and then I started sleeping in my bedroom. And I see a drastic improvement in my sleep. And I'm able to focus a lot, take decisions which is right and which is required at the right time. Thank you. One of the reasons why we keep the mobile next to our head. The last I checked in Hyderabad, I don't know about your city, an RPAT alarm clock costs 220 rupees. <laughs> yeah, please buy that when you're going home. Okay? Don't use your mobile as alarm clock. Do not touch your mobile at least for one hour after you wake up two hours before you sleep. Shivani must have also told you this. Because hoping that you had a good night's sleep when you get up, your brain is in a very, very learning mode, learning state. That is why in our culture we are taught the first one hour after you wake up should be filled with something religious, something spiritual, something positive, something empowering. Not start your day with Facebook, not start your day with emails. And two hours before you sleep, or at least one hour before you sleep, out. Simple things. And every time you start doing this, remember, what's that one thing we'll remember? I am the master. What's the simple principle? I am the master. I can do it. I'm not saying it's easy, but there's no other way. As a family, if you agree, and you have this open conversation, and you show them, my CEO's kids, I've been doing these sessions for the last five years on a weekly basis. They understand all these principles. So they don't force their parents or they don't go and sit with their mobiles when they sleep. Not allowed. Simple things. That's why awareness is so, so, so important. You don't have to impose. Make them aware. And they will be willing to choose provided they get that reinforcement from you. And as a family, you want to do this. During your office hours, it's good to use this. Because once you activate your social media, you don't need the SIM card, yes? And if anyone needs you, they will call you. That's what I tell my team. Don't message me and keep waiting. They'll SMS me and say, I, I, I will not look at it. When I'm free, I will look at it. You need me, you call me. Or you leave a missed call. When I come to it, I will call you again. If it is important, then come to me in the office. Hi. OK, hi. <laughs> Hello, hello, what is this nonsense? Just pick up the call and tell me what the damn thing you want. Don't keep saying, hi, hello, how are you, where are you? Nonsense, how much time gets wasted? That is why I just don't like these chats. I say, if you want to write something, write it. And if it is not urgent, I'll come back to it. If it is urgent, just give me a phone call. Be done with it. Simple changes. Switch off all notifications. You can do that now. Dil dadakti hai. Huh? Notifications, and now you know your withdrawal symptoms. Ah. Trust me, notifications are the chief wreckers of our attention. And I'll share an example. I was doing this session during COVID times for a, one of the top five IT companies, and the chief scientist of that company was there in the call, in the, in the training. So she heard this, she liked it, she switched off all her notifications, and I was doing a series of sessions for them. So next week she came for the next session, and then she said, Bala, I want to share my experience. I said, fine, go ahead. She's a chief scientist, by the way, with more than 35 years of experience. She said, Bala, last week was the first week in the last 10 years that all through the week I went home on time, I completed all my tasks, and I never felt stressed. First time in 10 years. And the only change she made was she switched off her notifications. 99.9% .9 of your notifications are useless. Ask yourself. You don't need them. And every app by default comes with notifications on. 
because they want a share of your attention. And we are so dumb. Abail Mujemar. Free pay you na? So up notification base se raho. I'll keep getting distracted. And then you can keep make, making money. Think. Make your bedroom radiation free. So there's this guy a few years ago who walked into one of the meditation centers in UK. He was saying, for the last two years, I have never been able to sleep properly for a single day. He lives in one of those studios, Indian guy. And then the meditation teacher asked, while just trying to find out, because you generally ask, what do you do, where do you stay, and what's going on in your life, what's your routine? Because he was complete, that he want, somebody said you practice meditation, you will fall asleep easily. Which of course, for many of you must have already experienced here. Which is good. So he came to the meditation center, and when the sister started asking, he started opening up. In his studio, he had 12 electronic gadgets, two iPhones, two laptops, one huge Bose system, all of them always on. And she suggested switch all of them off, or if you can't, move out and then sleep somewhere else. Less than three days, he was able to sleep properly for seven to eight hours a day. This is the only small change he did. So make your bedroom radiation free. Have screen free breakfast, lunch, and dinner. How many of you want to start doing that starting today? No screens. Sure? Yeah, please bless yourself. No screens. All non-essential activities avoid using mobile. Just think about it. How many times will you order things on Zomato, Amazon? Just ask yourself, your, how many transactions will you make on your banking mobile app? Essential activities, yes, we need to use, but what is the time we spend? Ask yourself. Fasting has anti-cancer properties. You want more? <laughs> you will get details. Harsh, you have videos on fasting? Fantastic, see? You should go watch those videos and understand how fasting works, what you need to fast, include mobile fasting. And I would request Harsh to make a video on this also. Yes, absolutely. Right, so one full day of the week as a family, you will not touch your mobiles. First two hours, all of you will go mad. Which is okay. Then slowly you will start sharing. I'll give you another example. We have a few more minutes. So I shared this with one of our Sears employees many years ago. And he started implementing it at home. Screen-free breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no mobile. And when he went to drop his daughter, because he was from Rajkot, he went to drop his daughter in the school or in the place where during Navratri times, his daughter's friend came running to my colleague, she said, uncle, I'm thankful to you. He said, why, I didn't do anything, why are you thanking me? She said, uncle, your daughter and I are friends. Your daughter told me that you don't eat, you don't watch your mobile or television while eating and you listen to her. So I asked my dad if he can also do that with me. So for the last one month, we share so many stories and I get a chance to speak with my dad so many things because now he also stopped checking mobile and television. And I wanted to thank you for that. Seven-year-old kid. Uninstall all social media apps. <laughs> now I don't want to talk about withdrawal symptoms. If you can't use a really long password and uncheck the keep me logged in box, I help many people overcome that. One of your passwords can be, I will not use Facebook for more than 10 minutes with some special characters thrown in, which you have to type in every time you want to access Facebook. And you will realize within less than a week, you will overcome your addiction. Either you will uninstall, or you will get frustrated and change your password. One of those will happen. No late night binge watching. And at least two hours of digital silence per day. Yes, please incorporate digital silence into your day. Very important. Apni mobile ke prati rehem dil mat bano. 
बेरहम बनो यू आर गोइंग टू अ मीटिंग लीव द मोबाइल एट योर डेस्क यू आर गोइंग फॉर लंच लीव द मोबाइल आउटसाइड डोंट डोंट गिव सो मच रिस्पेक्ट एंड लव टू योर मोबाइल इट डजेंट डिजर्व इट ओके इज दैट ओके साइलेंट लंच टूडे even when you walk out you'll walk out silently and then have lunch silently no mobiles no talking just for those few minutes what shivani ben was saying good so we started if any one of you is interested in joining brahma kumaris in making others outside of this room aware of what all you learned today we started this initiative called dwell digital wellness initiative and this is the website where a lot of content has already been posted very easy to remember digitalwellness.in and if you are interested in joining us and contributing in whichever way you want to we want your time that's the most important thing and if you can organize sessions if you can help bring out trainers who can get trained so that we can start spreading this message in schools colleges in corporates please drop us an email if you can partner with us and we have signed an mou brahma kumaris have signed an mou with anna university he is the anna university vc last year and they have introduced digital wellness as an elective subject in the university we completed teaching them the first batch and this is the digital wellness curriculum that we have developed unit 1 basics of digital wellness and attention this is a 30 hour two credit university level elective course where all the content has been developed by the brahma kumaris digital wellness team unit 2 how do you harness the power of your brain glimpses of which you got during this retreat unit 3 how do you harness the power of your mind unit 4 what is the science of addiction and de addiction and unit 5 which gets integrated all through the sessions what are the various digital wellness techniques some of which you have just seen all of these are taught are being taught at anna university as we speak and we also signed and this is our experience so far number of students 68 number of hours they spent 20 hours because they couldn't it was a short semester six bk sisters who learned and these are the colleges part of anna university the students from which participated in this digital wellness um, elective subject yes this can be done the all the content is ready what we need is people who can help train others so that this can be spread for now yes but for the trainer we are going to train them online so you don't have to worry we can work out something so both online and offline are possible but the course itself we are encouraging people to have it in the college because now most of the colleges have these offline sessions there's another university in sonipat near delhi rishi hood university with whom we have signed another mou to teach digital wellness to their students starting next academic year so the professors are getting trained and we are also in the process of developing the digital wellness curriculum even for schools not just for the university level which are going to get ready in another month or two and we are getting this translated into hindi tamil and telugu in addition to english so all the decks all the material everything is ready we just need partners who can spread this message and i'll tell you the goal so that you can also give your thought and make it a reality all of you our desire is to influence the central government show all this work and to show them that digital wellness awareness of digital wellness can reduce digital addictions among students because these are all the topics we are going to teach them and if we can show that to the central government our idea is to influence the policy so that digital wellness as a subject gets included in all schools and colleges because this is the other side of digital progress which nobody is talking about essence okay and summary you are the master of your mobile multitasking is a lie it's very simple 
use less so that you become useful. You use full, you will become? It's a very simple choice that you have. Whatever notes you are writing, I'm assuming all of you are writing, even if you forget everything, replace the mobile beside your head as Vinod was mentioning and replace it with this notebook. That's it. And every day, when you wake up and before you sleep, just open at random, you will get some good insight, good point, reflect, and then sleep, and the next morning try to see how you can integrate. How many of you want to do that? You don't have to do anything else, just this is sufficient. Rest everything will come automatically. Just keep that book beside your head on your bed and remove the mobile. Yes. Two years back, uh, my son was trying to take a picture from the third floor from his mobile and he fell. And he met with an accident, but still he's limping. So he survived, okay, he didn't fall on his head. So just to share with everyone, mobile is dangerous. So I'll, still he's, ad he's addicted to the mobile, but I'll share this with him. Yeah. Very sorry, okay. Uh, so there is one. I've been asking, that's my personal email, if you'd want to drop me a message. Yes, there is just one little uh, insight which I use. I only allow myself one hour of digital time on my smartphone. I don't use the internet for more than one hour. Otherwise, the internet is switched off. Yeah, absolutely. And that so, helps actually. Yeah, anything that works for you, which can increase your focus, efficiency, and by incorporating the digital silence. The portal, yeah. Digitalwellness.in, and then this is the email ID. Yes, it's already uploaded. The deck is already uploaded on that website. Only today's day or previous day? Previous days, all others we will send it, but this session's deck is already uploaded here. Others we will send you. If you have shared your email ID, you will get the drive link from where you can download. You will get whatever email ID you have used. The website where they registered. Yes, the same place, website where you have registered, that's where you can download. Okay. We'll place the content there. Okay? Sorry? Yes, yes, it's there on YouTube also. Okay? Do you have a few more minutes? We'll do something interesting. Pull out your mobile, switch it off. Two minutes only. Don't worry, heavens are not going to fall apart. You're at a safe space. Nobody will miss you. Just two minutes. Switch off the mobile. Sit straight. Hold your mobile in your hand. Hold it, just like this. Just hold the mobile. Both your hands. Keep it like this. Yeah, you don't have to lift it, otherwise your hand will pain. Just, just hold it like this. Yeah, just hold the mobile. Sit back. Close your eyes, feel comfortable that way. Take a deep breath. Let go of any tension in any part of your body and relax yourself. As you relax, Gently review from the time you wake up till the time you sleep. What is the amount of time you give to your mobile? This six inch piece of glass and metal which you are holding in your hands. How much time do you give it? It's not even a person. It's a piece of glass and metal. How much of your attention, how much of your energy, how much of your time are you giving to this thing that you're holding in your hands? Just reflect. Don't judge yourself. Don't criticize. Don't rationalize. Just reflect.
think of all those moments when your loved ones wanted to spend time with you but you were busy with this 6 inch piece of glass and metal think of all those moments when someone wanted to speak with you and you were busy with this 6 inch piece of glass and metal not listening to them not even making eye contact gently make this thought i am the master of my mobile i am the master of this 6 inch piece of glass and metal starting now i will not allow this 6 inch piece of glass and metal to govern my life i choose because i am the master i promise myself that i will incorporate at least 2 hours of digital silence every day my health my loved ones my family extended family my friends and my team these people are more important to me than this 6 inch piece of glass and metal make this thought mobile mera hai main mobile ka nahi this mobile belongs to me but i don't belong to my mobile i am the master gently keep your mobile aside visualize your family members bring them in front of you silently promise them see them in their eyes and then say you are more important to me because i love you and tell yourself i will spend time more time with my family members than with my mobile gently rub your palms and wipe your eyes and if you think you're powerful enough keep it switched off pick it up silently get up and walk to the lunch you can switch it on after your lunch